Gentlemen, what a treat. What a treat you're in for, because my guest tonight is one of my and your favorite actors. Starting today, you can see him in the Netflix show Black Earth Rising. Please welcome John Goodman. Nice to have you back. You look fantastic. Okay, thanks. You look fantastic. Very nice. Nice to see you. How you great, been? great music Wednesday night. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. See, yeah. Cook. yeah. We did yeah. great. Yeah. Yeah. Great band. Great Go band. Go Saints. Go Saints. Who that? Who that? Well, um, the Connor season finale. Congratulations on, on the first season. Thank did you. you is, are it going to be. Uh, they haven't told us yet. They haven't told us yet? No. Told us yet? We're just yeah. guessing. Your character's still alive. You made it through the yeah. first season. I good. Good. Think so. <laughs> television. Yeah. Television can be very dangerous. I'm just, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, what is it? What is it like? Uh, you know, when you're. I've never had a television show. I've never had a network television show. I've had this, but I've never done a sitcom. How, when do they tell you? Like, do you get to enjoy uh, the time off? Or are you all just waiting to find out what's going to happen? I'm waiting to find out what's going to happen. They usually tell us. Uh, like last year, it was the second show. They said you're getting picked up again. So, and uh, they're just, we eh, might tell you, we might not. Well, in, in the meantime, uh, you're starting to get Lifetime Achievement Awards. I understand you're going to get one in St. Louis, your hometown, from the St. Louis Film Festival. Yeah, they, they gave me that this fall. Is that particularly gratifying to get one from your hometown? If I could get one every week, it'd be better. <laughs> mm -hmm. But no, from the hometown, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of good actors that came from there. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, you know, it's where I grew up. I, I have very strong roots there. Do you still have family there? Yeah, my brother and my sister. Um, did you, um, were you a good child? Not particularly, on the outside. On the outside, yeah, you're a good child? I was a, a little sneak thief uh, on the inside, and <laughs> did you uh, literally geek, steal I, things? Yeah, I, I wore the 007 aftershave with brill cream in my hair and just same clothes every day, glasses with the tape on them. <laughs> we were nerds. <laughs> Back just, when nerds were nerds. Nerds were nerds. Comic books, Mad magazines, and uh, my buddy's brother, older brother, had a Playboy subscription. What? Wait, the brother had a Playboy subscription? Yeah, he was a, the older brother. Of was the, he at his own place, or did it come to no, the house? No, he, he lived in the house still. And the parents let him get a plane? And business. he had cartons of cigarettes laying around. <laughs> yep. Th that boy's a gangster. It was... <laughs> I can't it, imagine they, that. They swore us to Omerta early on. Wow. Because in my... I grew up, you know, where, you know, men learned about things like that by finding copies in the woods. Where you're supposed to. Well, we, we brought him to the woods. <laughs> <laughs> did, but did you get in trouble? Like, did you I, literally... I got caught shoplifting once. I saw a hat. I, said, I lost it. I said, this hat is so cool. It belongs to Wilson Pickett or somebody. And I, I got to I have it. So I did. I grabbed it, tore the prize tag out. And I started strolling. Strolling towards the front door. Just as casual as could yeah, be. Yeah, just... So, and then... Right when I got to the front door, I, my spidey son saw somebody behind me coming up on me. So I turned around, started walking back, and he goes, where are you going with that? I said, oh, to the cash register. <laughs> but by the time they stopped grilling me, uh, they believed me, but they had already called my mother, who How arrived on the bus with a bunch of tears. I was, uh, what, 14 or something. Wow. Yeah. And it, it, it really hurt her. But, oh. Yeah, I, did, I couldn't get her to believe that I, I was. I didn't mean to steal it. And so, and so, your life was ruined, and you had to go into acting. Yeah. <laughs> I, I hear the stories a lot in the yeah. equity office while I'm waiting for a job. I'm gonna get you a hat for Christmas. Thank you. Um, uh, you. Why did you? Why did you become an actor, though? What? What? What was it? The? What? What drove you to do that? If it wasn't a life of crime? There's a lot of. Reasons, uh, some have to do with that. There, I, I, I think now that it was a calling. I just, I had to try. 
And if I didn't, that's, if I didn't make it, that's fine, but I had to try. What was the first thing that you went, that it, where did it get its hook into you? Because oh, I certainly remember high like, doing like a play and going, oh, I might be good at this. Junior high school, I, I did a production of You Can't Take It With You. I was crusty old grandpa Vanderhoff, and I got up to make a speech and I'd forgotten my lines immediately. So I started making things up and walked around the table, and by the time I got around the table, I was into the dialogue again. And that was a good experience. I like being scared. Oh, really? Yeah. Really? Yeah, it was a nice charge. Wow. What's the worst experience you've had on stage? Because... I was doing a play called Big River in 85. On Broadway for here? A week, for a week straight, every time I was going to make my entrance, I couldn't remember my first line. And then I went into a panic. And I was, I'd come out. And one, I, I'm so sorry, ladies and gentlemen. I can't remember this dialogue. Please forgive me. And as soon as I opened my mouth, the dialogue came out. But that, it was paralyzing stage fright. You were literally going to confess to the audience. I, I had no choice. <laughs> I, you know, I'm not up here loitering. Who did you look up to? Who did you? I look up? Who was the actor you like wanted to be? Marlon Brando. And sure. And um, Robert Duvall, Gene Hackman, and Pacino. Pacino had a great run going when I was in college learning this stuff, and uh, I idolized him. And one night, a friend of mine, Marty Kuklinski, and I went to see uh, Godfather Two. And when we got home, hey, let's call Al Pacino. <laughs> yeah, he'll, yeah, we're acting students. He'll talk to us. It'll be cool. <laughs> and he had an unlisted number. I didn't think of that. How did you? What was the attempt? How do you even start? Hi, Al. Uh, I'm an acting student in Springfield, Missouri. Hi. Oh, great, thanks. Uh, <laughs> you were going to call him from Springfield, Missouri yeah. to where? New yeah. York? New York, to 212 area code. I knew that. <laughs> so Did I had half 212 of it and then just start combinations? 212 555 The oh, operator. information. Yeah. The old, a long yeah. distance I, but that was the next, that was a fallback plan. Just start making up numbers. <laughs> See if my phone number worked. We had a lot in common. <laughs> Try 1 800 Al Pacino. Maybe yeah, that would work. Yeah. <laughs> Just for his fans. Now, now this, you're, I, don't, you're, I don't associate with doing a lot of political things, but this summer you cut a commercial uh, in opposition to uh, uh, Missouri becoming a right to work state. Yeah. Now, uh, the right to work states, for people who don't know, it's basically it's a way to kill a union, essentially. Or, yeah. So, what, 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 what drove you to do that? And what, what did you say? It's the idea that. Uh, it takes away the ability to organize. Yeah, collective because, bargaining doesn't. Yeah, work I mean, anymore. all the all the fat cats now. It's just got everybody in a squeeze, and they can do whatever we want to. They they want to, and there's no recourse. You have to organize. You have to uh, have a strong labor body, and uh, it's, they're killing it right now. So I I just uh, and I'd always pictured myself a lefty, you know, with the with the cloth cap. And the buttons on it and yelling strike, strike, strike at cab meetings. Sure. Uh, like 1931. Yeah, 1931. Yeah, 1931. Exactly. And then yes. losing my career in my house in the 50s. Yeah. Right. Because you didn't inform. I wouldn't tell. I wouldn't squeal, see? Yeah. <laughs> Snitches get stitches. So I, it was just with that idea, I'd, uh, I th thought maybe I could help. That's all. But did, what, what happened? Uh, it, it failed. Oh, good. Yeah, we voted good. it down. Good. Now, you, uh, we, we have a clip here. You have a, you have a new uh, movie called Black Earth Rising. What, what is it about? Wow. It's, uh, about, it's an attempt to bring some of the bad actors in the Rwanda genocide to justice after all these years. And who do you play? Uh, a, a lawyer, an American expat lawyer living in London. You know, he's been involved with us for years. Um, just, yeah, just trying to straighten things out. Um, and we have a clip here where uh, I think another young lawyer has come to you to say that you're trying the wrong case for the wrong man. Can you tell us what's going on? Her, here? Mother, her mother was my partner. And during the genocide, her mother rescued her from a death camp um, where a massacre had just taken place of the Tutsi tribe. Mm -hmm. And she was a Tutsi, and we're trying to bring a Tutsi to justice. And uh, she doesn't quite like that. Jim? Why? Did you give her the Nyamoya case? I'm not saying there's any pressure on your room rental, Kate, but obviously I wouldn't be saying it if there wasn't. You're prosecuting the wrong man. 
on the wrong side and you've chosen the wrong person to do it. Because he's a Tootsie? And so am I. Then you'll be delighted when the judge agrees with you. It isn't your world. The Congo? The genocide. I prosecuted one of the first cases for the ICTR in 98. Your mother was my junior. It's where we met. I'd go so far as to say it's why you're here. And I don't want to go back to any of it, ever. Am I slurring my words there? No, okay. Perfect in every way. But John, thank you so much for being oh, here. Oh, thank you, Stephen. Thank you. Black Earth Rising premiered on Netflix today. John Goodman, everybody. We'll be right back.